Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. So, anyway, uh, you know, if you're out there, Billy, you know, you can always check on the uh, little box there. I think I'm drawing your credit card number or whatever. Um, what am I looking at here? Tesla. All right. This is the one I wanted to show you, but whatever. I'm going to show you because it's on my screen. So anyway, Tesla's really overbought. This upper red man here is the Bollinger Band. It's two standard deviations above the 20-day moving average. Why is that important? Well, a lot of uh, programs and algorithms are that are based on um, statistics are going to all of a sudden identify this as like, wow, it's a potential reversal. All right. 95% of trading should be within two standard deviations of, of the the uh, the moving average or the, the medium, the 20-day moving average. This is very far above it. This is very extended. It could keep going on for a while. I'm not saying that this is a, a sell. I'm just saying if you own this stock and you're a trader, just be careful because it could reverse really quick, especially if we start to get up around 265 or so. Another thirty dollars, which with this stock is nothing. I mean, it could it could do that in a couple hours. When stocks are overbought, it draws in sellers. People, a lot of trading strategies on Wall Street are based on this concept of reversion to the mean. Okay, and if something is that overextended, people are going to maybe think that it's going to reverse and come back in. So that's going to draw in sellers. And their selling might actually push the price down. But what I wanted to show you is this. Because there's a real divergence going on in the market here that was really masking some of the underlying weakness. So here is our S&P 500. All right. In this S&P 500, every stock is market weighted. It's market capitalization weighted. So the bigger stocks like Apple or Microsoft, have way more influence than whatever the 495th stock is in the S&P 500. And I, I would assume no one no one knows that, even if for a trivia question. All right. So you got to think about this this way. The S&P 500 is 500 stocks. There are three or four that make up 20% of it. So these three or four stocks could be doing really well and... A lot of the other part of the market can be going down. And that's what we have going on now. Most stocks are going down. And this is bearish for the market. We hear like, oh, Tesla's up, blah, 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 you know, whatever, NASDAQ's making new US. Great. So here's the S&P 500. And if you're in those names, that's fine. Stay with them. I'm just saying be ready for a quick reversal. That's the bullish engulfing pattern. So in this particular ETF, it's market capitalization weighted. Now, let's look at the ETF where every stock has the same weighting. How about that? Very different picture. Okay, so this is the S&P 500 with every stock being equally weighted. And here is the S&P 500 with market capitalization weighted. Looks very different, does it? doesn't it? So what does this tell me? And what should it tell you? Well, most stocks are going down. It's a very thin market. There's a lot of weakness going on in this market. And the fact of the, the way the indices are constructed, the fact that you got these really big market capitalization weighted things are the money's going into them. It, it, it brings the broader benchmark up. Now, if we look at the, the NASDAQ 100, we can see something kind of similar. This is the NASDAQ 100. This is the NASDAQ 100 where every stock is equally weighted. Very different picture. Why do I bring this up? Okay, let's just take a little walk back through history here. And this is really kind of what I'm trying to get at. All right. Uh, whoops, sorry. So the NASDAQ 100 where everything is equally weighted, okay, started to fall apart in November of... Uh, the very end of 21, right? Started to fall apart. This told us the market was falling apart. Guess what? The market weighted NASDAQ, where the money's flown into the big boys like Apple and Microsoft, it didn't peak until 
Oh, my goodness. In December, very late December. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that most of the stocks in the NASDAQ 100 were falling apart. Maybe 80% of the stocks were going down. But the money's going into these stocks that dominate the indices. And they make the indices go higher. And it kind of masks the underlying weakness. So if you're in the indices, that's fine. But just be very careful because there's going to be a quick reversal soon. Maybe it's tomorrow. Maybe it's next week. Maybe in, it's in a month. But it's going to come. All right, everyone. I think that's about as much as I need to say tonight. I mean, I've been talking about the same thing for a few weeks now. But this is what markets are. You know, if you're an auto mechanic, you're going to talk about a transmission for weeks. If you're a trader, you talk about like what's setting up for going up and going down. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, everyone. I'll see you.